Hello everybody, I am Nico D. Today I'm gonna show you all how to install and set up a new Armbian image. So I am gonna use the RockPy 4 for this, since I am re-reviewing the RockPy 4. This works the same on any other SBC. So first thing we need to do is download Armbian. So for that we go to the Armbian website and there we go to downloads. So here the RockPy 4, I will be using Ubuntu Bionic. It's all the same if you use Armbian Buster. So that's it, just download it and then write it onto an SD card or an eMMC. I advise to use Etcher for this. I am still using Win32 Disk Imager, but two weeks ago I deleted a 1.5 terabyte hard drive of mine that was connected to USB. With Etcher you cannot do that. I didn't look out very well, so there goes all my backup data. So here are we at the first boot of Armbian. This might take a while, just let it do. It is resizing the file system first. Ok, when you see this RockPy login, don't matter about all those things that come after that. Just type in root for your login name and password is 1234. Again 1234 for the current passwords and then type in your new passwords that you want. And again type in your new passwords that you want. Then your name, the computer name you want, or the login name, so I'm choosing Nico D. And again two passwords for that account name. Okay, now my full name, it's Nico D. Enter, enter, enter. Yes, all this is correct. And then we can boot into our desktop. So now we are in the desktop. So the first thing I do is connect to my Wi Fi. And then I do sudo apt update. When you see this mess, then just do it again. And then sudo apt upgrade. This is very important to do, always do sudo apt update and sudo apt upgrade at a first install. So now that is done I can start installing the tools that I use in my desktop. So first Firefox, that's the best to watch YouTube videos. Then the Mati System Monitor, that's a very handy tool to have. Then the XFCE4 goodies, there are all applications in there to monitor your SBC on the taskbar. And as last XFAT Fuse and XFAT Utils, this is necessary to be able to read XFAT file systems, like my SSD. Now those are installed, I can start setting up my desktop. So I add another panel. I increase the length to 100%. And I decrease the height to 40 pixels. And I lock the panel and I add some things, two launchers. I add two CPU control monitors, a CPU graph. A generic monitor, the keyboard layouts, places, screenshot, a system load monitor, a separator, and the window buttons. That's all. So now I arrange all of them so the window buttons go there. 
and now the separator right behind it and I expand the separator okay now the second one of the CPU controllers I set to CPU 5 so the first is the CPU 0 and the last is the CPU 5 so the first is the small cores the last one is the big cores then screenshots to the first place places to the second place I always do this the same so I've done this many many times the generic monitor I place there and I put in this command this is to get my temperature and I put the seconds to 0 0.25 and I increase the font size so now it is 31 degrees I can see my CPUs still need to do the keyboards to the last I don't use a USA keyboard but I use a British keyboard and also sometimes a Belgium keyboard so it's handy to have that there So there I create a link to Mati system monitor. And next to it I create a link to the terminal. So I just have to click there to see my terminal and I have to click there to see my Mati system monitor. Here are my places, so also easy to have this. Also for screenshots, I have to take screenshots often, so handy to have that there. Now I have to change something here, so remove the window buttons. So I only have them on the bottom taskbar, and I also add a network monitor. for VLAN WLAN 0 and I put it to values in that way I can monitor my network speed also so in this way I can see everything what's happening with my SBC I don't have to use edge stop I don't have to use anything else I see what is happening while I am using my SBC Now I have rebooted and I have plugged in a new empty NVMe drive of 256 gigabytes. Now I will install Armbian onto that. First I install Gparted. With Gparted I will create a file system on my NVMe drive. There is none yet. So let's start Gparted. Okay, here you see my SD card and here is my NVMe. So I want to create a new file. I can't. I first have to create a partition table, it says. So okay, we will create a partition table. It says what you have to do, so don't worry. So we have to go to device, create partition table, yes, MS-DOS and apply. Okay, now we can create a file system. Okay. It's all good. All we have to do is finish it. So click here to finish it. Okay, and that is all. Now we see here that we have got a drive of 256 gigabytes. So this is my NVMe drive. Now all we have to do to install Armbian onto the NVMe is sudo Armbian config. Here we go to system and the first thing is install. 
Here the first option is boot from SD and the system on NVMe. So OK. OK, yes. X4. And I'll just let it run. And then reboot. Now let's measure the speed of the NVMe drive. So for that I use GNOME disks. To install it you type in this. And then to run it you type GNOME disks. So here is my NVMe drive. So now let's benchmark it. I'm going to use files of 100 megabytes and I'm going to do this 100 times. So this is 10 gigabytes that it will do. It's only read that I'm doing now, but the write is the same. And as you can see, it's a rather impressive 620 megabytes per second. And now if we do the same on the SD cards, I'm only gonna do 100 megabytes, but only 10 times. So it's only one gigabyte instead of 10 gigabytes. And let's test it. And here we come at 22 megabytes per second. So from 20 megabytes per second, we went to 620 megabytes per second. So that is a big difference. And you really feel it too. It really boots very quickly. So that's it for today. My next video will be a re-review of the Rock Pie. So thank you all for watching. I hope you'll like my video. See you all later. Bye.